For 2,000 years, the forbidding cliffs of Ankarana have kept the human world at bay. But it's not just the dizzying heights of these thousand-foot limestone walls that discourage intruders. These rocks are lethal. Over the eons, rain has turned the mountain into a million knives of stone, pointing to the sky. This is no place for climbers, at least not human ones. But some creatures have mastered the art of walking on daggers. These intrepid explorers are crowned lemurs. With extra thick padding on their fingers and toes, negotiating the deadly needles of stone is like a walk in the park. That is, most of the time. Accidents can happen. The only place in the world that lemurs are found is here, in Madagascar. The entire island is smaller than the state of Texas, and up near its northern tip is the natural fortress of Ankarana, just five miles wide and 15 miles long. Almost all the crowned lemurs, one of about 50 different kinds of lemurs, live here. Walled off from human intruders, the crowned lemur's struggle for survival has gone on in secret. Now we are getting our first glimpse at this beguiling creature and the secret bag of tricks that's kept it alive in one of the harshest environments on Earth. Make no mistake, Ankarana is a dangerous place. If the jagged cliffs don't kill you, then one of these might. This toothy grin belongs to the Nile crocodile. Originally from Africa, an ancestor of this 16-foot killer made its way across the ocean to set up shop in this isolated place. Nowadays, these creatures devour about a hundred people every year in Madagascar. If human isn't on the menu, then they'll gladly settle for zebu, the local brand of cattle. Not surprisingly, crocodiles don't have a lot of friends in Madagascar. And in many areas, they are stalked and killed. But even here, the crocodile has its fans. One of them is Olivier Berra. This French scientist has spent more than 15 years studying crocodiles and he's come to Ankarna to unlock their secrets. Assisting him is Angela Razafimanatsu, a self-taught expert in the region's unique wildlife. Having heard rumors of some bizarre behavior, Olivier wants to track down the local crocodiles. He and Angela hope to penetrate the jagged spires of Ankarana's cliffs. 
but not by climbing. For in fact, the limestone is riddled with subterranean caves and caverns. The local people of Ankarna have known this for centuries. To them, the caves are sacred. They even bury their dead here. According to legend, their ancestors hid in these caverns when they were attacked by a neighboring tribe 200 years ago. In that case, the caves were a lifesaver. But now, some of them could be deadly. On a few forays into the underworld, locals have spotted menacing pairs of eyes staring out of the darkness. Now, Olivier and Angelin are here to find out if the reports are true. Are the normally sun-loving crocodiles actually living in caves? At first, all they discover are bats, typically the masters of darkness. It's an incredibly long cave system. It's more than 100 kilometers that have been recorded under the Ankana, and it's probably much longer. It might be two times, three times the size. Following an underground stream, the two come upon some signs that the bats might have company, some very large company. <laughs> I might be more further than we are. I don't believe it. Look at that. First, some footprints. Huh. This is amazing. That's a big one. This is just the front feet. It's probably two, two meter eighty, three meter. Next, an imprint in the mud. Looks like a big reptilian belly. Then, half a mile into the underground passageway, a face-to-face -face encounter. Look there, there's an eye there. Yes. Yeah, okay, we'll get him off soon. Do you see it? Yeah. Around the globe, crocodiles and their cousins, the alligators, are known as dedicated sun worshippers. Being cold-blooded, crocs need the heat to maintain their body temperature. If they aren't warm enough, they can't hunt, and eventually they will die. So why on earth would these animals choose to live in complete darkness in a cool, damp cave. Now that he's seen this unusual behavior for himself, Olivier wants to find out. To do that, he'll have to delve much deeper into the strange world of Ankarana. Mm. 
made mostly of stone, and Karana is riddled with canyons and caves. 200 million years ago, these cliffs were an underwater coral reef. Over the eons, it was shoved upwards above the sea where rain sliced and diced the rock. Earthquakes split the limestone, creating the narrow canyons. These are Ankarana's secret gardens, a last refuge for unique creatures like the crowned lemur. To look at a lemur is to gaze into our distant past. Lemurs are primitive primates, called prosimians, a line more ancient than monkeys or apes. Over 40 million years ago, the ancestor of these lemurs was probably swept out of Africa during a flood and floated to Madagascar on some storm-tossed debris. Monkeys never made the trip. As the only primates in town, the prosimians flourished, diverging into dozens of different kinds of lemurs. And they've developed a lifestyle very different from their monkey cousins. In lemur society, the females rule the roost. This troop operates under the singular gaze of a one-eyed queen. It's the end of the dry season and all the females of the troop are carrying an extra burden, their newborn babies. Lemurs are always on the go, and it's up to the babies to hang on for dear life. With crowned lemurs, it's easy to spot the inferior sex. The males are branded with a distinctive black V on their heads. They may not call the shots, but male lemurs do serve a purpose. They have the job of marking the troop's territory with secretions from their scent gland. Every day, the crowned lemur troop patrols the 35 acres of forest they claim as their domain. Today, they catch some intruders. A few neighboring lemurs have snuck in, looking for food. This small-scale rumble in the jungle is mostly a shouting match. The forest is crowded, and every bit of food in the troops' territory is precious. Having won the battle, the queen leads her troop to a stream near a cave, but they don't let their guard down. They know that predators lurk on the ground. And in the water.
The lemurs aren't surprised to find crocodiles in the caves. They've learned the hard way to beware the darkness. But for humans who study crocodiles, the idea that they've become cave dwellers is mind-boggling. Determined to learn more about Ankarana's non-conformist crocs, Olivier and Angela decide to investigate downstream. Most people on a canoe trip would steer clear of a group of large, man-eating reptiles. But these researchers are thrilled when a sun-baked riverbank turns out to be a crocodile hotspot. Look, this is a big one. He's absolutely huge. It's really so rare to see them so easily here. It's not hard to share Olivier's awe. Crocodiles are the last surviving vestige of an ancient and powerful group of animals, the ruling reptiles. The first crocodilians date back 200 million years to the age of the dinosaurs. And some of the early crocs were huge, 35-foot monsters that ate dinosaurs for breakfast. No one knows exactly how crocodiles were able to survive when all the other large reptiles went extinct. Throughout Madagascar, Nile crocodiles are feared and despised. But here in Ankarana, things are different. In many places of the west coast of Madagascar, people really hate crocodiles because we attack them. The people of the Ankarana have got a special relation with the crocodiles, like nowhere else in Madagascar. They're not frightened of them. In fact, at one sacred lake, people go out of their way to make the crocodiles happy. According to an Ankarana legend, once upon a time, a sorcerer became angry with a local tribe. As punishment, he turned them into crocodiles. Since many view the crocodiles as their ancestors, it has become taboo to kill them. People here are also friendly with crowned lemurs. They believe the lemurs have human souls, and so the locals protect them, along with the crocodiles. This makes Ankarana a very special refuge. Since humans arrived in Madagascar 2,000 years ago, much of this tropical forest has been destroyed. Many unique creatures have gone extinct, including about 15 species of large lemurs. Today's lemurs are all fairly small. The biggest ones weigh only a few pounds. But not too long ago, the forests were home to lemurs the size of a male gorilla. The loggers have made their way to the outskirts of Ankarana. Up until now, the rocky fortress, along with the local people, have protected the animals here. So today, the forest remains a sanctuary and a fine place to raise the lemur family. This little lemur is about six weeks old. And now, for the first time, her mother allows her to explore a little and practice her climbing skills. but only in a nice, dense thicket. The one-eyed queen keeps her young son close. 
she's wise to be wary. Because lurking in these trees is an animal who's highly skilled at killing lemurs. It is called the Fusa. This is one of the strangest and most elusive creatures in Madagascar. And it has become the obsession of American biologist, Luke Dollar. A Fusa is a long, lithe, and lean super predator. It's got semi-retractable claws, an extraordinary musculature that lets it climb up and down tree trunks as easy as a squirrel would. Yet this thing outweighs a cocker spaniel. A lemur is no match for a motivated fusa. Trying to escape, the queen heads for the highest and smallest branches, which should be too weak for the heavier fusa. From there, the only way out is to jump. It looks like there'll be no lemur for lunch today. But that's okay. Because the Fusa is not a fussy eater. They can eat anything. Of course they eat lemur. They also eat snakes. They eat chameleons. They eat rodents. They eat wild pig. The Fusa has an appetite that matches its ferociousness. Uh, and there's nothing that's too big or unattainable for the Fusa as a predator. Luke spent months trying to trap and study Fusa in other forests of Madagascar. But in Ankarana, he's caught three Fusa in just a week. Those claws and teeth could do serious damage. So Luke uses a blow dart to put the Fusa to sleep. One of Luke's goals is to use DNA studies to find out exactly where the Fusa fits in the evolutionary tree. The Fusa looks a little bit like a cat looks a little bit like a dog, it looks a little bit like a hyena, but it's actually none of those things. The Fusa is actually a really big mongoose. It's like a mongoose on steroids. Look at those teeth. <laughs> yeah. This Fusa looks healthy and well-fed. It's lucky to be living in Ankarna, because elsewhere in Madagascar, its habitat is being destroyed at a disturbing rate. The Fusa is endangered. There are thought to be less than 2,000 or 2,500 Fusa left on Madagascar and therefore in the world. The time is near for Fusa, and if something isn't done for their conservation and the conservation of their habitat, it's going to be too late. A few miles away from Luke's camp, Olivier Berra is gathering evidence about another fearsome predator, Ankarana's strange crocodile. Some of his best sources are the local fishermen. The knowledge of the local people is very important looking to crocodiles because they've been living with them for generations. 
So they know their habits. The fishermen know where they stay. They know where they breed. They know also where they see young animals. This fisherman, called Kafu, lives near the river where Olivier spotted the big crocodiles. Does he catch crocodiles sometimes in his net? Kafu says he hasn't been catching any crocodiles, but he has noticed where some are building their nests. So, thank you, Kafu. Without this kind of inside information, it might have taken Olivier weeks to track down a nesting site. Falling into a trance-like state, the female lays up to 80 eggs. She kicks sand over the nest to protect it from the sun. If the eggs get too hot, her babies will boil in their shells. Nesting is carefully timed near the end of the dry season. All the animals of Ankarana must stay in sync with the ebb and flow of the seasons. For the crowned lemurs, the next big event is all about food. The 100-foot giant fig is starting to fruit, and it's a lemur magnet. The queen is quick to lead her troop to the fig tree. For some of the youngsters, it's the first time on such a giant tree, and the climb is dizzying. They'll settle for fruit on one of the lower branches. The figs will last a couple of weeks, and even this tough troop will not be able to keep them all for themselves. They'll have to share. Today, the fig tree is also full of Sanford's lemurs. They're close cousins of the crowned lemurs, but not friends. Like the crowns, it's easy to tell the sex of the Sanford's lemurs. Each male face is framed by a showy rough collar of white fur while the brown females have a less flamboyant style. Besides sharing the same taste in food, both the Sanfords and side of Ankarna. Ultra-sensitive cameras can now record by moon and starlight. This flashing sparkler is actually a firefly. As night falls, the bats awake and head out of their cozy caves into the forest to search for food. This lepi lemur emerges from its home in a hollow tree. With its cute, wide-eyed baby face, it's typical of Ankarana's nocturnal lemurs. But there's one night-stalking lemur that won't be winning any beauty contests. This strange-looking creature is called the Ai Ai. Unlike all the other lemurs, the Ai Ai is covered in coarse hair. And has giant bat-like ears. And then there's its most bizarre feature, an extra long middle finger that is not much more than a thin needle of bone.
There are no woodpeckers in Madagascar. Instead, there is the eye eye. As it climbs, it taps on the tree. Its giant ears well-tuned to detect the slightest change in sound. If it hears a hollow spot or some movement, the eye eye gnaws a hole with its large rabbit-like teeth. It then uses its long skinny finger to harpoon the unsuspecting grub. Because of its strange appearance, some local tribes believe the eye eye to be evil. And like many animals in Madagascar, it has been hunted to the brink of extinction. And Karana is one of its last haunts. When the dry season ends and the rains come to Ankarna, it's a mixed blessing. Lemurs don't seem to enjoy the downpours very much. But they'll certainly appreciate the results. Rejuvenated by the rains, the thirsty plants of Ankarana suddenly burst into bloom. Fresh flowers are especially appetizing to the crowned lemurs. The petals are easy to digest and the pollen is full of protein. This is the perfect time for mothers to wean their babies. Though the little ones might not agree, especially the queen's son, who seems reluctant to give up his princely perch on his mother's back. For him, life is about to get a lot less cushy. The youngest male in the troop, he's suddenly at the bottom of the pecking order. As his little female cousins are happy to point out. The new generation is curious about everything around them in the Ankarana forest, and the possibilities for entertainment are endless. Today, they're captivated by a courtship dance performed by a pair of chameleons. With chameleons, nothing can be rushed, especially not romance. A crucial part of this tango is the costume. The brightly colored male signals his amorous intentions with a red-hot eye. Chameleons can rotate their eyes in a wide arc, always on the lookout for danger. So even when passion calls, they won't be caught with their pants down, so to speak. For the young lemurs, the show is too interesting to ignore. But for the female chameleon, such a large audience ruins the mood. Finding his date so rudely interrupted, 
The male's eye is no longer flush with passion. Now, it's black with rage. But he's sure to try again, because in Ankarana, the rainy season is the best time for having babies. On the riverbanks, a distinctive sound is announcing some new arrivals. This is the call of baby crocodiles, ready to hatch from their shells. Finally, one breaks free. Is it a boy or a girl? The sex of crocodiles is determined by the temperature of the nest. Between about 91 and 93 degrees Fahrenheit, mostly males will develop. A few degrees above or below produces females. This year has been particularly warm, so almost all of these hatchlings are girls. As they struggle from their shells, they are in grave danger. They could be eaten by predators or suffocate if they can't escape the underground nest in time. But help is on the way. It's their mother. She's been guarding the nest for several weeks, and now hearing her baby's cries comes immediately to their aid. Unlike some reptiles who abandon their young to fend for themselves, crocodile mothers are the picture of devotion. These jaws could easily rip a limb from a large mammal, but for a baby crocodile, it's the safest place in the world. One by one, the mother carries her brood to nearby nursery pools, where she'll continue to look after them. But the rainy season was shorter than usual in Ankarana this year, and the pools may soon disappear. If hot, dry weather continues, then the young crocodiles will be forced to move on in search of a wetter home. The lack of rain is putting pressure on every creature in Ankarana. Inside the hidden forests, the trees aren't producing their usual crop of fruit. The troop has to settle for eating leaves, even though many are poisonous. To flush out the toxins, the lemurs need to drink water, and soon. The only water nearby is caught in a few tree hollows. As always, ladies first. The queen and the other females make sure they get their fill before giving way to the males. And the youngest male drinks last, if there's any left. With food and water in short supply, the lemurs are forced to descend from the treetops and scavenge on the ground. In times of need, Crowned lemurs will quickly abandon their vegetarian diet and try to eat just about anything. This forest crab is well armored and doesn't seem worth the trouble. But the shell of this giant pill bug is no match for a lemur's teeth and the pulpy insides are finger licking good. But there are some creatures that even a lemur knows it's better to avoid. 
As resources dwindle, competition with other animals becomes fierce. And no one is more annoying to a crowned lemur than its greedy neighbor, the ring-tailed mongoose. Once again, the queen and her gang exert their dominance and the intruders are driven away. The pools left by the rains are shrinking. Every living thing must somehow adapt or die. This is especially true for the crocodiles. With their nurseries quickly evaporating, the babies must search for a new home. Though crocodiles love to bask in the sun, water is crucial. Here, they can stalk their prey. They can court and mate with their partners. and they can cool down when the heat of the day gets too much to bear. As the rivers dwindle to narrow creeks, crocodiles young and old head upstream in search of deeper water. These journeys can be dangerous, for along the river live people. Hungry animals will eat humans, but more often, when the two come together, it's the crocodiles who are hunted. Killing crocodiles is taboo in most of Ankarana, but that may be changing. Skins like this one are highly valued on the international market. Doing good to me, this thing. Yeah, it's a big adult. Yeah. But Olivier thinks the crocodiles of Ankarana may have one last trick up their sleeve, the crocodile caves. Following the rivers upstream, the crocodiles come to the rocky outcrop where the waters disappear into underground caverns. Olivier believes the crocodiles are drawn here not just as a great source of water, but as a safe haven from human predators. But how is it possible for these sun worshippers to survive in this cool, dark underworld? While temperatures outside can soar above 100 degrees, inside the cave, it dips to around 70. Crocodiles are amazing animals physiologically and they can adapt to different type of habitat and you can find them in very hot weather and in very almost cold weather. So the temperature is okay, but what is there to eat? If you look close enough, you'll see that this cave is teeming with life. Bats play a crucial role. These are fruit bats hanging out with their young. The bats dine outside the cave at night, but during the day, they return to sleep. Inside, they bless the cave with plenty of droppings. 
Bat guano, along with decomposing bat corpses, provides lots of nourishment for creatures like maggots and crickets and this poisonous tarantula. And there's plenty of life underwater as well. There are shrimp and tiny fish who over the eons have become completely blind. What we found out in the caves for the feeding of the crocodile was fantastic. There's plenty of food and we found so small crocodiles, very fat. Even if there's not a lot of big game, it turns out that an adult crocodile can live for months on one good meal. All the pieces of the crocodile puzzle seem to be coming together. But for Olivier, one major mystery remains. Crocodiles have excellent eyesight and can see well at night. But in the depths of the cave, there is no light at all. How do they find their way through miles of winding passageways? No one knows. The mystery only deepens Olivier's respect and admiration for the crocodiles. Once again, they've proven their tremendous resilience and adaptability. No wonder creatures like these have been roaming the Earth since the age of the dinosaurs. Outside the caves, the dry season wears on. Many animals will be drawn inside, though most will not venture very far. The one-eyed queen and her troop of crowned lemurs are very wary of the caves, but sometimes they're the only source of water, and so they must go. Today, the queen's oldest daughter leads the way into the depths. were too quick to get caught in the snapping jaws. But soon enough, they'll be back. For in Ankarana, water is precious. To come here is dangerous, but to stay away could be suicidal. Here in this isolated corner of the world, lemurs and crocodiles have both turned to the dark, wet caves in times of crisis. And in this harsh landscape, their willingness to journey to the strange underworld has turned out to be the secret of their survival. <laughs> 